my loves. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome into this reading for the full moon in Taurus lunar eclipse. For those who are new, hello and welcome in. It is wonderful to have you here. If you want to learn more about these readings and how to get the most out of them, you can check out the tutorial video I created to catch you up on all of the amazing things that we do in these readings and the best practices I recommend for getting the most out of the information that's coming through and understanding where this information is coming from essentially your spiritual support team, but we get more into that in the introduction video. For those who are not new, hello and welcome back. It is lovely to have you here. I appreciate you. I'm honored to show up and serve you in this way as we together navigate the astrological cycles and understand more about our own astrology and use the spiritual tools of the cards to connect with our support team on the regular to honor these cycles and to get the most out of them so that we can be the best versions of ourselves. So let's talk first about full moon energy. Full moon energy is the energy of the fullness of a cycle. It's a celebratory energy. So with full moons, we tend to focus on the things that we are celebrating under the theme of the sign that the moon is full in. Now, a full moon is always in the sign that's opposite wherever the sun is right now. So right now, the sun is in the sign of Scorpio, and the opposite of Scorpio in the astrological story is Taurus. Before we get more into the Taurus energies, this is not just a full moon. This is a full moon lunar eclipse. So the energy of this cycle is a little bit different than our typical full moon energies. Typically a full moon energy vibration cycle information will last us 28 days until the next full moon that we have. However, eclipses are more powerful, more punctuated energies that have longer cycles. They can be from six months to a year. So this full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus cycle is going to last us a year. And so it's going to take us from when the full moon happens on November 8th, all the way to when the next full moon eclipse happens October 28th next year, 2023. So this is a year long celebration that we are being invited into when it comes to the Taurus themes. Now the Taurus energy is the second sign of our Zodiac story. It's what's called a fixed sign. Fixed signs represent the fullness of a season. So in the Northern hemisphere, Taurus happens during the season of spring. It represents the fullness of the spring energy and archetype. It has the element of the earth. So earth elements in our zodiac story represents the material world. It represents the physical realm. And so we have with the Taurus energy, this beautiful vibration and focus on values, material possessions, the environment and the earth. So these are the themes that the Taurus archetype and energy brings up and brings into the Zodiac story and into our lives to explore on a deeper way. It's a contrasting energy to the Scorpio vibration, which is the season that we're in. The energies that are opposite each other are always going to be in the same what's called modality. So Scorpio is also a fixed sign, but it represents the fullness of the season of fall. So we have the fullness of spring opposite the fullness of fall, creating this dichotomy and complementary yet opposing energies. Scorpio is the energy of water, whereas Taurus is the energy of earth. So Scorpio is more concerned about the emotional realm, is more concerned about diving deep into the fullness of our emotions, where Taurus energy is really fixed and wants to stay on the material plane in the earth and is concerned with the practical, physical realm. So as we are going to move into this cycle with this lunar eclipse, we are going to be celebrating with the full moon energy, this 
Taurus vibration, so values, when it comes to our own values of who we are, what we value in a practical way in our lives, what we find supportive, and what helps to ground us in this experience of life. We're going to be celebrating that with the Angel Therapy deck by Doreen Virtue. So even if you don't believe in angels, your spiritual support team, whoever they may be, is going to help bring guidance to you through the Angel Therapy deck. You are going to be watching only one reading for this lunar phase. There's a lot going on. If you haven't watched the new moon solar eclipse reading for the new moon in Scorpio. I recommend watching that because that's a whole nother cycle that we're in right now that has very, very powerful energies playing out in our lives and is going to help us navigate the things that are coming up in our sphere. But this reading, you are only going to watch for where the moon shows up in your chart. So you're going to look for this symbol right here. And the symbol right here represents the moon. And you're going to look for in your chart what astrological sign this symbol was in. If you don't know how to find that information, I did create a tutorial video to help guide you to that information and to that understanding. It is available and the link that's popping up right now. And you can learn all about the information of your chart or at least how to understand and read the chart from this tutorial video. So you'll watch the video and the advice for your moon sign for this reading. So if you want to support me, there are many ways to do that. You can comment on this, like this, share this, dialogue with me about this, help me learn what is working for you and resonating for you and what isn't. And you can also share it with people who you think might benefit from this guidance and information and this fun game that we play with the astrological cycles, our own astrology and the spiritual support tools of the cards. You can also give me a financial donation at paypal.me slash devoted vulnerable. And you can sign up for any of my services at devotedandvulnerable.com slash services. I do offer chart readings there. I do meditations. You can contact me for custom guided meditation. I offer tapping services and I have a chakra meditation service as well. Those are ways that you can support me if you feel called. It is not necessary, but some people want to know how they can reach out and support me. And those are the ways. Also, let me just invite you in to watch Molly McCord's really amazing breakdown of what is going on astrologically the moment this eclipse happens in 16 degrees, one minute of Taurus at, at 6.02 in the morning Eastern time on November 8th. If you want to learn more about where the planets are and what that means for you on a personal level, you can go watch her video. I'll link it here so that you can really learn more about the astrology of this particular moment. I watched the video. I thought it was super helpful and supportive. And so I'm going to guide you there. If you want to study more and learn more about astrology and learn more about how this phase is going to impact you. So let's get started and find out what we are going to be celebrating when it comes to our values and our finances for this lunar eclipse cycle that is going to take us all the way into October of next year. So this reading is for you if the moon was in Capricorn when you were born. If you're already familiar with the moon in Capricorn energy, you can scroll ahead to the reading. So the moon in the astrological story represents our emotions and the sign that it was in when we were born represents how our emotions express. So your emotions express themselves through the Capricorn archetype. Now the archetype of the Capricorn energy is the energy of the sea goat. We have this image of this goat climbing this impassable mountain and getting one step by one step closer to the top of this beautiful mountain. Okay. So the energy of this Capricorn energy is very determined, very resourceful, very patient, very ambitious, very responsible. It's a cardinal energy, which means that it's one of the energies of the Zodiac that starts a season and it starts the season of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. 
It represents the element of earth, which represents the physical material realm. So your emotions express themselves through this initiatory physicality, basically that taking one step after another in the physical realm. Now you see here, I put a little gesture hat on top of the Capricorn moon, and that is because I'm signaling an alignment that's called detriment. Now detriment sounds like a really terrible word and I promise you it's not as bad as it sounds. So a detriment alignment is always going to be when a sign is in the opposite of that planet's ruler. What does that mean, Paige? Well, the moon rules the sign of cancer. So the opposite of cancer in our astrological story is the energy of Capricorn. They're both cardinal energies, but the Cancer is a water energy, whereas Capricorn is an earth energy. So where the moon rules Cancer and Cancer feels really at home here, its opposite feels really not at home in this vibration. So you may find in your emotional realms that there's this like unease feeling. I put the gesture hat on here because the Cancer sign has a crown and in royal times, the rule or the role of the gesture was to reflect the flaws of the ruler. So you're kind of reflecting the flaws that the cancer, that the moon energy brings. You're very fixed on a goal and on achieving it step after step in a very practical way. Whereas the cancer vibration is very focused on initiating emotions and moving forward with emotional energy. But emotions, as we all know by now, can get in the way of our goals and of what we're trying to achieve. So I feel like that's part of why the gesture hat is a good symbol for the detriment energy because you're kind of reflecting back to the ruler where it might not be, um, where it, its fault, faults are, where its flaws are. The emotional realm has limitations and the Capricorn energy really kind of points those limitations out, especially because it's a very determined, resourceful, patient and ambitious energy where emotions are kind of all over the place. They lead us one place, they lead us another place. They're hard to predict, they're constantly changing and that makes it hard to achieve anything. Let me know if you have questions about that. Remember that just looking at the planet and its sign that's in is like a breadcrumb of the astrological story of any alignment and definitely of you because there's different things that can modify this. There's different things that can challenge it. There's different things that can benefit this alignment in your chart. So it's not the whole story, but it is a little bit more for you to understand about yourself and how your emotions express. Let's see what card came through for you. So if you haven't already taken a few deep breaths, called in your spiritual support team, and open your heart to receive the guidance that's most aligned for you at this time. I invite you to do that. Take a few deep breaths. Pause the video if you need to. Oh, hello. Did you guys see that? I don't know if that was caught on camera, but this card went flying. Oh, I don't know if you guys got this one for the solar eclipse, but go watch the solar eclipse. Anyway, shield yourself. Protect yourself from harsh or fear-based energies by envisioning a healing light a cocoon of healing light surrounding you. Okay, my beautiful moon in Capricorns. For the next year, it's important for you to shield yourself, to protect yourself from fear-based energies as you move towards your goals. It's almost like your emotional realm may be more unstable than you're used to, and it may be trying to move you off track of your goals and your ambitions. And this card is telling you just shield yourself from those things to envision a cocoon, like going from the top of your head, three feet above your head, all the way down to the bottom of your feet, as wide as your arms can stretch, a cocoon of energy all around you that is protecting you, shielding you, keeping you from absorbing, from emitting, from taking in any fear-based energies. Cause they're going to, cause I feel like they're going to keep you off track. They're going to derail you and it's not to scare you, but it's to let you know that there's something you can do about it. There's something you can do to protect yourself from any fear-based energies 
from the media, from the environment, from people in your space, from what you're ingesting. Be very mindful too. Like it's not just, oh, I can shield myself from these things so I don't have to be careful and mindful about what I ingest. No, you should still also be loving to yourself and be supportive of yourself and only putting yourself in situations that are supportive to you. And if you find yourself being overwhelmed, that's when you can imagine this cocoon of healing energy around you, supporting you, healing you, protecting you. This is pretty simple and clear here, my beautiful moon and Capricorns. I don't know that I have much more information except to relate it back to what you value. You definitely want to shield and protect yourself because if you're letting fear-based energies into your life, you're not going to be able to act on what it is that you value. And that is the theme of this lunar eclipse, the value system that we have. We're celebrating what we value. And as you start celebrating what you value, if it triggers somebody or challenges somebody because they're not celebrating what they value or they do value what you value, but they've kind of may do with less or they've allowed themselves to to act in a way that dishonors them and what they value they're gonna try to push against you because you are stepping up for what it is that you believe in and that's going to challenge them and instead of looking at why it challenges them and maybe doing some inner work they're gonna first at least try to attack you so that's the shield energy. Just shield yourself from those fear-based energies. People may be afraid of what it is that you value and how you're showing up for the things that you value and going after what it is that you value. That's really what I feel here. Your emotions are like lit up. So the earth energies are always playing really well with each other in the Zodiac story. So your earth cardinal energy, whereas Taurus is fixed earth energy, but you all are supporting each other. These energies play well again together. So you are kind of lit up by this eclipse energy and excited by it and supported by it. And as you start to move forward on achieving your goals um, that are lit up by this eclipse, you may find that fear-based energies are coming in to kind of, kind of derail you and you just protect yourself from it. You don't have to attack them. You don't have to try to right their wrong. You just love and accept that that's where they're at and appreciate the reflection of that you're doing what you came here to do, um, even if it does trigger people, and then just imagine this cocoon of energy around you. Okay, let me know if this resonates. Let me know if you have questions. And as always, namaste. The universal light within me salutes and honors the universal light within you. Namaste.